Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. So today, uh, this is going to be our lecture on the topic external symptoms of virus infected plants in our course virology and bacteriology. We will go through the PowerPoint presentation. Now the outline uh, of the presentation includes two main topics, plant infection by a virus and external symptoms of virus infected plants. So first we discuss plant infection by a virus. So how does virus infect a plant cell? Plant viruses enter cell through wounds made mechanically or by vectors or by deposition into an ovule by an infected pollen grain. After entry, virus moves from one cell to another through um, cytoplasmic connections which are known as plasmodesmata. Once the virus is inside the plant cell, it replicates and spread into the neighboring cells and then into tissues around and then into entire plant. This results in two types of infections, either local infection or uh, systemic infection. Uh, the development of local lesion symptoms is an indication of the localization of the virus within the lesion area. Whereas in systemic symptoms, the virus continue to spread beyond the borders of the lesion. Um, now the uh, symptoms appear uh, due to the result of interference and disruption of normal metabolic processes in infected parenchyma or specialized uh, cells. Now in this diagram, these boxes represent plant cells and these cells are connected through these uh, cytoplasmic connections which are known as plasmodesmata and these viruses move from one cell to another through these uh, cytoplasmic connections and they finally enter the vascular parenchyma and uh, com then companion cells which are uh, uh, represented here and then sieve tube elements and through these uh, sieve tube elements the uh, viruses they spread into the entire plant body. Now due to the replication of virus inside plant cells a group of internal and external symptoms are induced and start appearing after the incubation period. Now what is an incubation period? Incubation period is a time lag between the time of inoculation of virus into a plant and the appearance of uh, symptoms. So external and internal symptoms are influenced uh, by a number of factors, for example type and strain of virus, uh, type and strain of host plant, etc. Uh, these symptoms are visible abnormalities in the form of color changes of foliage or growth abnormalities. Now here you can see uh, different examples of morphological symptoms that includes um, necrosis, um, sclerosis which is the yelling of the leaves and the vein clearing where the veins appear to com be completely devoid of the uh, chlorophyll content and they appear yellow. In some uh, plants, uh, the viral infection shows no symptoms and such plants are known as symptomless carriers. In some plants, symptoms disappear temporarily in uh, some diseases, uh, which is a process known as masking. Now, several factors affect appearance of symptoms. These include the age of the inoculated host, position of leaf on the inoculated plant, uh, inoculation method etc. Now we discuss the main uh, topic of our lecture which is the external symptoms of virus infected plants. Now the external symptoms provide the first clue about possible viral infection uh, but symptoms change under different environmental, nutritional and climatic uh, conditions. The term symptoms refers to visible abnormalities in plants these symptoms are in the form of color changes of foliage or growth uh, abnormalities. Mostly the host plants are affected systemi systematically by the viruses and the virus persists in infected plants throughout the life. In vegetatively propagated plants, the virus persists throughout life and the progenies are always uh, virus infected. Uh, the external symptoms um, may be due to infection of a single inoculated cell of host plant or can be a result of systemic infection where virus moves from site of initial infection to the in entire plant. 
Now, what sort of external symptoms appear in plants? It can be categorized into the following types. There can be either color deviation or color changes, changes in growth patterns, symptoms on stem and uh, roots, uh, flower symptoms, abnormalities in fruits, uh, seeds and pollen. So first we discuss uh, color changes. Now, what sort of color changes appear uh, during viral infection? Uh, can be of the following types. These color changes appear due to loss of chlorophyll and development of other pigments like anthocyanins, xanthophylls and carotenes. Now the symptoms uh, due to changes in color include mosaic, chlorosis, blotch, street mosaic or stripe mosaic, vein clearing, vein banding, puckering, spot lesions such as ring spot, black spots, purpling and uh, reddening. The mosaic symptoms are characterized by uh, mottled green uh, or patterns of green and yellow areas. Uh, in case of uh, chlorosis, uh, when yellow color is uniform um, and unbroken, it is known as uh, chlorosis, just like here. When the discoloration is diffuse without clear boundaries, it is called a blotch. In plants of family Gramini, the mosaic pattern may be in the form of streaks um, and stripes. In case of vein clearing, the tissues close to the veins turn yellow and the remaining laminar surface stays green. As you can see here, uh, in vein banding, the tissue near the veins remain green and rest of the laminar surface turns yellow. You can see here. Apart from uh, color changes, there are also certain uh, structural changes of the organ. Um, Pouch-like development of green parts of leaves are called puckering as you can see here. So this is the uh, any, a, a structural change apart from the changes in the color. Uh, now in spot lesions, uh, the drying of a, a cell in a particular fashion leads to ring spots or uh, black spots, etc. The ring spot lesion consists of a central group of dead cells. Beyond uh, this, there develops one or more superficial uh, concentric rings of dead cells with normal green tissue between them, and hence they form uh, spot lesions. Now, there's another symptom which is called purpling and reddening of veins. Uh, particularly under the leaf surface, uh, under the leaf surface, uh, it is it is due to the anthocyanins uh, formation due to virus infection. So these are uh, different symptoms that appear due to changes in color. Now we discuss uh, external symptoms uh, due to changes in growth patterns. Uh, changes in growth patterns include leaf curl, leaf roll, galls filiform leaves and which is broom. Now in leaf curl, uh, it is a symptom in which leaves curl from the margin backward, bringing the center of the lemna upward. Uh, in leaf roll, the margins roll inward forming a trough like shape with midrib in the center of the trough as you can see here. Now the leaves uh, become thick and leathery. Uh, due to the accumulation of starch. In some plants, galls uh, can be formed on leaves and other organs as you can see here on the stem. Uh, uh, in mosaic diseases, leaves may be abnormally lobed with fern-like appearance forming uh, filiform or shoestring structures as you can see in here in this example. The witch's broom refers to the marginal curling and chlorosis of leaves, uh, shortening of, of internodes, and abundant branching of the stem. As you can see here, as you can see here, the wound tumor refers to unevenly thickened veins which are depressed below the upper surface of the leaf, and enlargement, as you can see here, enlargement or outgrowths formed on stems or roots. Um, for example, wound tumor virus in sweet clover. Etching, as you can see here, refers to superficial shallow necrosis and collapse of tissue. 
Now, vein inations are irregular growth of veins underneath the surface of leaves and may even be large, flat enlargements. As you can see here, as you can see here, dwarfing and stunting occur as a result of growth reduction due to, due to early infections. These early infections results in decreased yield in grain, fruit or flower um, and uh, results in the stunted growth of the plant as you can see here. Now we discuss symptoms on stem and roots. The major uh, stem symptoms due to viral infection are seen in swollen stems. Uh, tumors are produced on the stem of grower plants by wound tumor virus um, here. In woody plants, uh, stem um, symptoms appear as flaking, cracking, necrosis of bark and excessive gum formation, uh, stem splitting and scar formation. Uh, the prominent symptoms can be seen on roots um, uh, and these include um, abnormal proliferation of rootlets, reduced number of adventitious roots, um, in legumes, the nitrogen fixation is reduced by uh, severe, severe virus infection. Here you can see um, a stem portion which is swollen due to viral infection. Then there is a, st uh, a stem which is uh, covered with uh, tumors. And then here you can also see a deformation of roots as in carrot. Uh, in flowers, the virus infection produces marked changes in color. A color breaking symptoms are very common in flowers of many virus infected plants. The breaking usually consists of flecks, uh, streaks or sectors of tissue. Uh, the breaking of petal color is due to loss of anthocyanin pigments. In a few instances, uh, there may be increased pigmentation in some areas of the petals. Infected flowers are frequently uh, smaller in size. Uh, these uh, flowers may drop prematurely. Flowers may be reduced in size, deformed uh, in shape, and quite frequently flowering uh, may be reduced. This affects the yield of viable seeds. In the end, we discuss abnormalities in fruit, seeds, and pollen. Now the viral infection manifests a number of changes in fruits and seeds uh, and pollen. The color changes in fruits uh, include mottling, uh, ring spotting and necrotic symptoms. Uh, also misshaped and distorted fruits, wart-like projections, uh, dwarfed, malformed and seedless fruit, um, aborted seed formation and seed discoloration, sterile pollen and misposition of a uh, fruit bunch, for example, in uh, banana due to banana virus. Virus infection may have drastic effects on seed production, like in wheat and soya bean, etc. Pollen production uh, and pollen from infected plants are frequently sterile or its viability is reduced. So this is the end of our topic for today. In the last slide, I have mentioned a few references, uh, book references, and there's also a YouTube link uh, here. You can find the material presented in, in this uh, PowerPoint presentation, uh, both in the books, and you can also watch a video uh, which discusses the external symptoms of plants in uh, great detail. I hope this lecture was helpful. Uh, thanks.